Welcome to our show, The China Briefing, where we dive into the latest happenings with a touch of ease and a sprinkle of insight. Today, we've got a mix of geopolitical moves, economic strategies, and a glimpse into the future of technology and tourism. Let's get started. First up, we're heading over to the South China Sea, where the waters are getting a bit choppy. The Philippines is pointing fingers at China for some risky business at sea, including deploying a helicopter to disrupt a Filipino research mission. It's the latest episode in a series of maritime encounters that's turning the sea into a hotbed of tension. Meanwhile, the US is throwing its weight behind the Philippines, with Secretary of State Antony Blinken calling out China's provocative actions. It's like a high seas drama, but with real geopolitical implications. Switching gears, let's talk money a lot of it. China is rolling out the red carpet for ultra-long-term special government bonds, to the tune of 1 trillion yuan. That's a hefty sum aimed at stabilizing the economy and investing in everything from tech innovation to food security. It's a bold move to counter debt risks and give local governments and investors a bit of a confidence boost. Think of it as China's way of saying, we've got this, to any economic jitters. Lastly, we're taking a peek into the future with humanoid robots and a tourism resurgence. China is betting big on robots that might just be your next co-worker, aiming to lead in tech innovation. On a lighter note, Malaysia is rolling out the welcome mat for Chinese tourists, hoping for a post-pandemic boom. And let's not forget, Australia is sending a cool $3 billion down under to the UK for some high-tech submarines. It's all about staying ahead in the game, whether it's in tourism, tech, or the deep blue sea. That's a wrap for our whirlwind tour of today's headlines. From geopolitical chess moves to economic strategies and the robots of tomorrow, it's all happening in our big, interconnected world. Stay tuned for more in-depth coverage on these stories. Please continue to watch for detailed content. Philippines says China made dangerous sea moves, use chopper. Bloomberg. The Philippines has accused China of making dangerous moves and deploying a helicopter during Manila's research mission to the South China Sea. China attempted to prevent a Philippine Fisheries Bureau vessel from reaching Thaitu Island, which is administered by the Philippines, and deployed militia ships in the area. The incident is the latest in a series of maritime encounters between China and the Philippines as the two nations assert their overlapping claims in the South China Sea. Tensions between the two countries have been escalating for months, with the Philippines taking a more assertive posture under President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and seeking support from the US. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken criticized China's provocative actions in the contested waters during his recent visit to Manila. What we know about China's new ultra-long special bonds to stabilize economy. South China Morning Post. China's government is planning to issue 1 trillion yuan, $139 billion, worth of ultra-long-term special government bonds this year as part of an effort to step up fiscal spending. The bonds are expected to have durations of 30 to 50 years and will primarily support areas such as scientific and technological innovation, integrated urban-rural development, coordinated regional development, food and energy security, and the high-quality development of the population. The issuance of the bonds will help to increase official government debt but will not be included in the official fiscal deficit. The move is seen as a response to growing debt risks facing many of China's local-level governments. Default risks among local government financing vehicles have increased significantly in recent years, prompting concerns that large-scale defaults could impact the country's state-dominated financial system. The bonds could help to improve the overall debt structure, reduce funding costs in the public sector and provide a confidence boost to investors. Bill to put US-China science pact under new scrutiny passes a House committee. South China Morning Post The US House Foreign Affairs Committee has approved a bill that would increase congressional scrutiny of science and technology agreements between the US State Department and China. The bill would require the State Department to provide detailed information about such agreements to Congress including their benefits and risks, before pursuing them. 
If passed, the administration would have to wait 30 days before proceeding with the agreements, during which Congress would assess national security risks and human rights considerations. The bill received unanimous approval from the committee, but no date has been set for a vote on the House floor. Malaysia sees Chinese tourist boom in the offing after pandemic slump. Al Jazeera Chinese tourists are returning to Malaysia in large numbers following the COVID-19 pandemic slump, with industry figures expecting arrivals to reach pre-pandemic levels this year as visa-free entry is introduced. In January, arrivals rose to 60,000 from approximately 45,000 in 2023, and as high as 120,000 in February during the Lunar New Year period. The Malaysian government has set a target of 5 million Chinese visitors in 2024, hoping to aid the post-pandemic recovery of Southeast Asia's fifth-largest economy. China sees rise of humanoid robots as disruptive innovation, economic boon. South China Morning Post The Beijing Humanoid Robot Innovation Center, which includes Xiaomi, UbiTech, and Jingcheng Machinery Electric, plans to release a general-purpose humanoid robot prototype in a bid to boost China's technological innovation and high-end manufacturing capabilities. The center, established late last year, aims to create a common technological platform, a public service platform, and regulatory standards for the humanoid robot industry. The release of a humanoid robot prototype will help advance China's self-reliance and homegrown innovation as it competes with the US in important tech areas. Australia to funnel $3 billion to UK for AUKUS sub-reactors, designs. Nikkei Asia. Australia will send $4.6 billion Australian dollars, $3 billion, to the UK to facilitate the building of nuclear-powered submarines as part of a tripartite effort with the US to counter China's rise in the region. The funds, to be delivered over the next decade, will go to expanding the Rolls-Royce production line in the English city of Derby that will build the required nuclear reactors and also cover design costs for the submarines, known as the SSN Orca submarines. ASEAN's digital economy growth hinges on upskilling. BCG Chair. Nikkei Asia. The Boston Consulting Group, BCG, has forecast that the value of Southeast Asia's digital industries will increase from $300 billion to $1 trillion by 2030. However, this figure could reach $2 trillion if the region invests in upskilling its workforce, according to Rich Lesser, the global chair of BCG. The digitization of industries will reshape sectors including healthcare, education, and agriculture, Lesser said. ASEAN will need to invest in upskilling and reskilling its workforce to tap into the potential for digital growth, he added. The ASEAN Digital Integration Index Report 2021 highlighted the region's low digital skills and talent scores. US must bolster its shipbuilding ports as China keeps strengthening, analysts. South China Morning Post. The US China Economic and Security Review Commission, USCC, has been warned not to misinterpret the teachings of Sun Tzu's The Art of War, as policymakers face China's growing military strength. While the ability to subdue an enemy without fighting is considered the highest form of skill in warfare, witnesses have argued that this does not mean China is unlikely to launch preemptive attacks. Instead, it suggests China is building up its military and technology to strike C4 ISR systems of systems before the enemy can respond. Witnesses have called for the US to be visibly prepared for a protracted war and to re-establish its shipbuilding ports. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com.
Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email.